He's a former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor. He serves on the boards of Illumina and Pfizer. He writes in his newest op-ed for The Wall Street Journal about the Trump coronavirus spread, writing it might have been avoided and that Mr. Trump and his team uh, aren't passive victims of bad luck and an aggressive uh, virus. We'll get to that in a second. But what do you know uh, just about uh, the, the current state of President Trump, in, in your view, because we've seen so, so many anecdotal uh, stories about people said, wow, I feel great. Uh, and then only to find out that the second week is when some of the really serious symptoms rise. Is, is it possible that that's what we're seeing in terms of uh, the president we've heard? You know, he says, I feel like I could walk out of here. There's speculation that he might even go uh, back to the White House uh, today. But knowing what we know, Scott, is that is that make sense? Did he get early enough intervention with some of that stuff from Desivere and, and, and the Regeneron to where he may not experience that that uh, what's not a favorable outcome that we've seen? Well, look, we hope so. And it's possible. We, we don't have a lot of information. He does seem to be what we would call a moderate patient. He has some oxygen requirements. There's a suggestion that he has pneumonia or infiltrates some kind of inflammatory change on his CT scan, his chest CT. They wouldn't put out the details, but they said it's consistent with what you would expect in the circumstance, which seemed to suggest that there's some infiltrates on that scan. Again, they wouldn't, they wouldn't tell us exactly what. So he probably would be in the moderate category right now, given his age and, and those findings. Now, he did get a lot of advanced treatment. I think that the Regeneron product is going to end up being a good product and hopefully will have made a difference in this case. Remdesivir introduced early should be more impactful. It is the case to your, to your initial question that patients who do well this first week tend not to have that sort of second week, that inflammatory reaction. But there are exceptions. Um, there are patients who don't have a very serious course of the infection in that first viral response phase, that first week of the illness. And then they'll go on to have that post-viral inflammatory phase that we worry about. But, you know, the fact that he does look like he's improving this week and he hasn't had a very severe illness this week does suggest that his odds of having a bad second week is lower. But Scott, the, I think, you know, we heard about Friday and, and supplemental oxygen. I, I've read in different places that maybe there is a drop in oxygen levels on Saturday uh, as well, which is, is closer. Also, as you said, they didn't say that the lung reading was normal. So that it, they said it was what you might expect, but they didn't say normal, which means maybe it could be some pneumonia. What, what about the dexamethasone? I thought... Is that that's not usually used uh, as a prophylactic as, as a something in advance of of things happening, is it? Or what, what does that indicate about whether there, there's some type of, um, you know, the more serious conditions that we've seen when steroids are called for? Yeah, so it's consistent with that. He was a, he's sort of in that moderate category. He has a, he's desaturating. He has a low O2 set. He does have some inflammatory changes on his lungs. Um, Oh, uh, the dexamethasone would be indicated in that setting. So dexamethasone is indicated for hospitalized patients who are requiring oxygen. So he, he might meet criteria just based on that alone. And their threshold for using it might be a little bit lower because the reason you don't use it typically is you want to give it to patients when they're having that inflammatory response, but you don't want to give it to them when they're still fighting the virus, when they're in, they're in that direct um, viral fighting phase of, of their response because the steroids themselves could perhaps diminish the body's ability to react to the virus to actually fight off the viral particles. You want to wait until we've, you've mounted a fight against the virus and now you're having those post-viral inflammatory changes. But given the fact they introduced remdesivir early, which is going to have direct activity on the virus, and given the fact they introduced the antibody early, which again will also have direct activity on the virus, they might have been a little bit more confident at pushing the steroids a little bit earlier because they said to themselves, you know, they don't need his immune system to do all the work fighting the virus because they've given them a lot of medicines that are going to do some of that work for them. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.